All right, and then there's my Facebook. Okay, let me try to get my Periscope going again. Okay. Hello, Facebook. Just wait on my Periscope. There it is. Hello, Periscope. So welcome to all my audience. It's Prophet David Taylor here. I am, oops, lips dry. I am back after a, uh, a break, a couple week hiatus. I uh, needed some rest. So uh, thanks for tuning back in because uh, we're getting started again. Uh, this is my regular time, Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I come on on the second Thursday for my No More Genies broadcast. All right. Let's jump right into today's message. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your wonderful power. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your mighty word, O oh God. As you speak through me, I surrender my brain, my tongue, my mind, my lips, my heart, O oh God, to the Holy Spirit. So you can speak through me, O oh God. We want you to be glorified, the saints to be edified, and the demons to be terrified. We thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. <clears throat> So, I'm going to give to you what the Lord gave me to give to you. We're going to look at Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. That's a very familiar scripture, but uh, hopefully we're going to show you some new things today based on what the Holy Ghost has shown me. We're going to look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23. I will start out with the King James Version. And here it is. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay, Berean Study Bible. Truly I tell you that if anyone says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and has no doubt in his heart, but believes that it will happen, it will be done for him. New Living Translation, I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen, but you must really believe and it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Okay? So the title of today's word is, Speak to That Mountain. Speak to That Mountain. But I wanted to give you some new insights that maybe you had never seen before, because we've heard a lot about, you know, naming and claiming things in confession. But I want to look at what the Word actually says, and I want to show you some of what the Holy Ghost showed me. So the Lord says, Truly I tell you that if anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and has no doubt in his heart, but believes that it will happen, it will be done for him. Here's the first thing I want you to notice. The Lord does not necessarily mention a time frame. And that's why a lot of people have not moved forward into the miracle the way they wanted to. Because if you spoke to the mountain, you only spoke one time. And once again, because you expected it to be like a magic experience, where you, you just kind of say the magic word in Alakazam and it just happens. But that's not actually what the Lord says. It says, if you have no doubt, believe, have no doubt and believe in your heart that it will happen, it will be done for you. But it doesn't say anything about a time frame. It just says that it will happen. Okay, so that's the first principle I want to give you is that when the Lord makes that promise about our confessions, he doesn't say anything about how fast it'll happen. He just says that it'll happen. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I want to give you a picture of the invisible to help you with your faith. Okay? When you say stuff and you confess things out of your mouth, I want you to have the picture in your head of the angels of God coming out of heaven lining up with the words that you're saying. In other words, what if you were going to like demolish an old building on a construction site? They put the dynamite and they put the charges around the building, but it takes them some time. Then they clear the area, they clear the zone, then they press the detonator, then the charges go off and the building falls. Okay? Something similar, similar happened with the walls of Jericho when they marched around the city and didn't say anything. And then on the seventh day, God told them to give a shout, and all of a sudden the walls fell. And a friend of mine was recently in Israel and talked about what those walls look like, the walls of Jericho. But the point I'm trying to make there is God had them do that for a week. Well, when you're saying stuff, the angels of God, they're like setting the dynamite charges around your mountain 
That's why God keeps telling you not to give up. Because a lot of Christians run up to their problems and they speak one time, then they step back and they say, oh, well, I guess nothing happened, and then they stop saying it. Mm -mm. In the spirit world, many times the reason that you have to say it daily or say it over and over again is because every time you say it, it's like laying spiritual dynamite charges so that when the day comes when you press the detonator, that thing's going to fall. Okay? Now, another thing I want to look at where the Lord says, you have to have no doubt in your heart. You have to believe. Why do you think I spent so much, so much time talking about HBO? You got to hear, believe, and obey. Excuse me. You got to hear the word of God, but you have to truly believe it. Well, I stopped by to tell you, what do you think believing looks like? What believing looks like is believing that what God said is true, regardless of any sensory input to the contrary. And sometimes that's going to look and make you feel funny. But if God says something is true, it doesn't matter what the world around you looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It's going to come to pass, but you've got to say it. You've got to believe it, like the Lord said. You have to have no doubt in your heart. Okay? Well, it's an example of that in the Bible. God called Abram at 75 years of age and told him he was going to be the father of many nations. Isaac, the child God promised him, however, didn't show up until Abraham was 100. That's 25 years. That's 25 years. 25 years, 25 years, 25 years. And it amazes me how sometimes in our religious backgrounds, people don't teach that. When God turned himself into a man and came through the womb of a woman and was born into the world, he gave himself 30 years to prepare for a three and a half year ministry. 30 years. 30 years when God became a man, he let himself grow up for 30 years years before he declared himself the Messiah in public. Do you see that? So the point I'm trying to make is that you can't have any doubt anywhere in the process. Because the first thing I told you was that there's no mention of a time frame. So you can't have any doubt anywhere in the process where God is telling you about his blessings and his promises over your life. I like the way Bishop Jake says. Bishop Jake said that when you get married, they pronounce you man and wife, but it's going to take you the rest of your life to grow into that role. I completely agree with that. But all while you're doing that, you have to believe you can be a good spouse. Did you know that? You have to believe you can be a good husband. You have to believe you can be a good wife. You have to believe you can be a good parent. That's what the Lord is talking about. You can't have any doubt. In your heart, you've got to believe all the way through. Now, I know we don't like that because in our religious training, we always hear about how God has all power and God can do anything and God is unlimited. All that is true, okay? But God didn't even make the world all at once. He made the world in six days and then he rested, okay? So that's why there's nothing wrong with instant manifestation. Sometimes things happen just like that. But if they don't, then you can't give up. You have to keep saying it. Because the Bible says you have to have no doubt in your heart and believe it will happen. And then it says, it will be done for them. It will be done for them. It will be done for them. What does that sound like? It sounds like that there's something or somebody or a crew working for you, like when you move. Like when you move your apartment or you move your house, if you can hire a moving crew, that crew is moving for you to get all your stuff out of your house. Well, Jesus says it will be done for him. It will be done for them. It will be done for you. What is it in the invisible world that's working for you to make this stuff come to pass? Faith and the angels of God. The spiritual substance of faith is working on your behalf in the invisible world, and the angelic beings, the heavenly beings, are working in the invisible world to bring what you say to pass. That's why if you've been wanting to go back to school for a while and it hasn't happened, you have to keep saying it. Because as you say it, the angels of God are touching hearts and opening doors and making ways and clearing paths and setting everything up for what you say to come to pass. And that's why so many Christians end up not having the fullness of what they wanted 
because they gave up halfway. They stopped saying it. They, they let some doubt creep in. They got some doubt in their heart. And then they just stopped confessing or they didn't believe what they were saying. Because again, they're hung up on the time frame. They're, they're hung up on this instant thing. Sometimes things do happen instantly. But if they don't, you've got to keep saying it until they do. You understand what I'm saying? That's how you get the blessing from the invisible world to the visible world. And again, I will reference God's creation week. Because when the Lord got to the next day, he spoke like maybe one or two things for that day. Then he stepped back and looked at it, and he said, Behold, it was good, and the evening and the morning were the day. So in other words, God said, That's all I'm going to do today. That's all I'm going to bring forth today. And then God stepped back, and then he did some more the next day. Okay, now if he didn't make the world in an instant, because remember, Genesis 1-1 does not start where the earth starts. The earth was already there. Genesis 1-1 starts with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it goes, and the earth was, was, was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. So we don't know how long it was between when God actually made the realms, the heavenly realm, the earth realm, and the hell realm. And we don't know how long it was that the earth was sitting out there without form and void. But Genesis goes straight to the week that God took to, to pull everything out of the invisible and bring it out here in the physical world where we can see it. And he started with light. God did not say, let there be a sun. God did not say, say, let there be a moon. God said, let there be light. And God made so much light, he had to take it and shape it and fashion it into a bunch of things that we see now. He fashioned the sun. He fashioned the moon and put the moon over the night put the sun over the day, and then he put the stars so far away until they look like little pinpoints in the curtain of heaven. But some of those stars are actually suns like our sun. Whole new solar systems, they're just so far away, they look tiny. And then he made constellations, okay? And he did all that on the first day, and then he was cool with that. <laughs> and then he moved on to the next day. So I'm saying that to say that if that was his pattern in making the world, and he didn't make the world all at once. He didn't just say, world be. Then that's why we can't give up in our faith when we're trying to create very specific things in our lives. And I'll tell you something else. That's why a lot of people don't get the growth in God that they want. Because if you have what I call a spiritual hero or someone that you admire or someone that you think is mighty in God or someone that you think is deep in the spirit or deep in the word, I stopped by to tell you they didn't get there in no week. <laughs> if you're looking at somebody that got strong faith, that's years and years and years of walking with God. If you're looking at somebody that's strong in the word of God, that's years and years and years, decades of studying the Bible. If you're looking at somebody that's strong in the apostolic or strong in the prophetic, that's decades of walking with God. Okay? That's why a lot of Christians don't get the growth in God that they want because they thought they could only go to church like three, four times a year and then by magic, they was going to be the spiritual giant. It doesn't work that way, okay? You have to go a little by little, step by step and day by day and you've got to keep saying what God is saying. You've got to keep saying what the Word is saying until it comes to pass out here. You see that? So the word for today is speak to that mountain. Excuse me, let me get another drink. You have got to speak to that mountain. You have got to look that mountain right in the face, and no matter what it is, if it's finances, if it's age, if it's time, if it's something like an entrance exam, like let's say you're going back to school, and you don't know if you can pass the entrance exam, if it's moving, if it's, if it's buying property, if it's accepting your mantle in God, maybe you hear God calling you something in the spirit, like maybe you feel God calling you to pastor, and the last thing in the world you ever thought of yourself of as is a pastor. But you've got to keep saying what God says until it comes to pass out here. Because it's not going to come ready-made. I know you want it to come ready-made. The earth didn't come ready-made. God told Adam, have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every creepeth thing that creepeth on the earth and subdue it subdue it, that means wrestle with it and get it in order. Wrestle with it and get it in line. Conquer it. Dominate it. 
The earth did not come ready made. When God made all the animals, he didn't name them. Adam had to name them. When God made the garden, the first thing that God used to do, he made a mist come up from the garden until he could let it rain so Adam could till the garden and get away anything that wasn't growing and take care of what, what uh, God had given him. It didn't come ready-made. So where we got this idea that the blessings of God come ready-made, I do not know. I just know it's very detrimental to our Christian lives. I stopped by to tell you, if you are a parent, it's going to take you a minimum of 16 and an average of 20 to 25 years and half a million dollars per child. <laughs> if you want to turn that little infant baby into a fully functioning human being that can take care of themselves, that's going to cost you half a million dollars and 16 to 25 years, especially to get that child through college or get them married. That's a quarter century per child. That's how long it takes. Some people are ready to be on their own as te teenagers. Some people can leave the house at 16 and never look back. There's a lot of people that go to college at 16 because they're super bright. Some people, it takes a little bit longer. It takes 20 years, and sometimes it takes a whole quarter century. So you know when a baby comes out that womb and that baby's so small you can hold it in your hand, and you're looking at your new son or your daughter, and you never knew you could love anything that much. You never knew you could, you could just cherish anything that much because that baby's right there in your hand. It's going to take you 25 years uh, and half a million dollars per child to turn that baby into a functioning human being. I know what I'm talking about. So that's what I mean when I say where we got this instant idea from, where we have this, this short-term faith or where we give up so easily. I do not know where that came from, but that is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches you've got to say it, you got to believe it in your heart with no doubt, and it's going to come to pass. It will be done for you. That means that your faith and the angels are working for you in the invisible to bring it out here in the visible. Have I experienced that in my personal life? Yes, I have. I have said things that there was no evidence to the contrary. I have spoken to doors that looked like they were closed, and I mean impossible doors. And I said what the Lord was saying, and I kept saying it until it came to pass out here. And when it came to pass out here, sometimes it happened so fast, but that was after days and weeks and months, sometimes in some cases years, of speaking the word. And the Lord gave a prophetic word this morning about how when God shows up, sometimes when it finally does come to pass, it happens so fast. Remember that the Lord only ministered for like three, three and a half years in public. Then he died. Then he resurrected. Then he was on earth for 40 more days. And then he was gone. <laughs> so I'm saying it took all the time. God promised Jesus in the Garden of Eden to Eve after they'd sinned. God said he was going to use the seed of the woman to bruise the serpent's head. God promised Jesus Christ in the Garden of Eden. It was thousands of years before Jesus actually showed up. And when he showed up, he grew up for 30 years, and he was on the scene for three and a half years, and then he died, and then he rose three days later, 40 days on earth, and he was gone. All that time to get Jesus here, and then it happened like that. You see what I mean? So that's what I mean when I say sometimes when it finally does get out here, everything comes rolling out so fast, you've got to be ready for that too. But in the meantime, while you're waiting for that, you've got to keep saying, and you've got to keep preparing for your harvest. You've got to keep preparing for your manifestation. And that's, the, that's the last principle I want to give you. The mistake that a lot of believers make is that they don't really believe believe. <laughs> what do I mean by that? I mean that when you really believe, believe something, you get ready for it. What if when you were a little kid, your parents told you we're going on a vacation at the end of the month? What would you do? You would sit up every night dreaming about, especially if you were going to someplace fun that you liked, like a beach or a water park or, you know, an amusement park or whatever. But when your parents told you this thing is going to happen at the end of the month, or if your parents told you, like, you're going to get to go to your favorite day camp this summer, and that's going to start, you know, like at the end of May or maybe the beginning of June, what would you do? You would ask them to buy you some shorts. You would buy some swim trunks. You would talk about the food if you're going to take your lunch or get food 
at the camp. You would tell all of your friends. You would uh, find out about your bus route so you could be there on time. You would uh, see what they were going to do for 4th of July. I mean, over and over and over again. If your parents told you this is going to happen, you would get ready. Well, I stopped by to tell you that God is our Heavenly Father. And when our Heavenly Father says, this is going to happen, a whole lot of Christians make the mistake of not getting ready because you don't really believe, believe it. You just kind of say you believe it. If God tells you this is going to come to pass in your life, then from the moment the Lord speaks that to you to the moment you have it in your hand, you should be getting ready for it. That's why a lot of people that are praying about marriage end up missing their spouse because they're not getting ready to be a spouse. If God promises you, promises you a spouse, in between the time that God says it and the time you meet that person, you need to be prepared. Otherwise, when you meet them, you're not going to be ready. If God promises you money, I promise you that if you don't learn how to handle money, more money is not going to solve your problem. Just watch shows about the lottery and watch people that get a big windfall of money. Most of those people end up in worse shape than they were before they got the money. Do you know why? Because they never made the transition up here. They never studied money. They never got ready to handle a bunch of money and they didn't know what to do with it when they got it. You see that? So God will give you prep time in between the time he makes you a promise and that promise manifests, but you've got to keep speaking to the mountain. And while you're speaking to the mountain, you need to prepare for when that mountain is actually removed. Okay? In my private practice of uh, piano and voice lessons, because I was a private piano voice teacher for years, I would always teach my students there's three kinds of energy. There's one kind of energy that you have when you're at home singing with yourself when you're that's you know singing in the shower because you just kind of go for it when you're by yourself and in the shower there's another energy that you have when you're in front of your teacher that's a different kind of energy and you're a little bit more nervous but that's why you know if you have a good teacher you build a relationship with your students so that they feel comfortable singing in front of you because singing is a very vulnerable experience don't ever let anybody tell you anything different it's very vulnerable to open up your mouth and sing but there is a third kind of energy. And that third kind of energy is when, you're on, when you are on stage and that curtain goes up or that curtain parts and that spotlight is right on you and that mic is hot. And that mic is so hot it can hear you breathe. And, you, and it's all in the mic. You feel like that mic is so hot it can hear you think. That's a different kind of energy when you are on. And somebody puts a hot mic in your hand and that's why a whole lot of people go heave it, ah, but heave it, ah, but because that's a different kind of energy. And if you're not ready for that energy, a whole lot of people will get paralyzed. What you're supposed to do with that energy is let that energy drive you to a strong performance. That's what champions learn how to do. Take that nervous energy, that adrenaline, and let it push you to be better. Okay? That's what that energy is for. To make you go out there and get the performance of your life and make you sing like it's the last time you're going to sing on earth. But you've got to learn how to harness that energy with mental training because you cannot fool your body into fight or flight. Your body knows when danger is real or not. So you can't make yourself get that rush when you're at home or with your, with your teacher. That rush doesn't come until you're actually about to go on stage and that curtain about to part and them lights all bright and in your eyes and that mic is hot and everybody's staring at you. Okay, you got to learn what to do with that energy and that takes training. And that's the difference between champions and amateurs. Amateurs sit up there and let that energy make them freeze and they do this. Okay, and they shut down. But if you're a champion and if you've got some kind of training, somebody taught you how to mentally get ready for that energy and you ride the wave of that energy into the performance of your life and sing like this is the last time I'm going to sing on earth. And that's how you become a champion. And that's what I tell my students. OK, so I'm saying that to say I'm saying that to say that it's the same way with the promises of God. You got to get ready for them because when somebody puts that hot mic in your hand, you got to be ready to go. Bishop Jake said when he gave his first big conference, he was so nervous he was about to call it off. 
because he said that all the stuff he was afraid that was going to happen, happened. He said all the people from the press that didn't like him were there. All the people that were, you know, preacher, preacher averse, that just said that all preachers were crooks. They didn't have anything to say about Christian, anything good to say about Christians. All, you know, the newscasts were there, you know, all the, the gossip columns. People from all over the world actually came, actually came to hear Bishop Jake's speak when he first spoke. And he said he got so nervous, he was just about to call the whole thing off. And then he said, one of his mentors said to him, Bishop Jakes, the world has turned its ear towards you. Do you have anything to say or not? And I was like, wow. He had to go out there, nerves and all, grab that hot mic in front of all them cameras and say what he had to say. Why am I saying that? I'm saying that because it's going to happen the same way for you. Some of y'all looking at me right now, you've been praying and saying things, promises of God for years. Well, one day it's going to actually happen. <laughs> one day that hot mic is going to be in your hand or you're going to be shaking hands with the person that's going to change your life or you're going to come into a windfall of money or you're going to get your big break or whatever it is you've been believing for. One day it's going to happen. And what you going to do when it happens? What you going to do when it happens? You have to prepare. You have to be ready. You have to be ready so that when God actually opens the door, because when Father opened the door for Jesus, he came out of the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost and ready to preach. He walked right up to the scripture in the synagogue, opened the scripture and preached. And that's in Luke 4.18. The Lord went for it. Didn't nobody know he was a rabbi? Didn't nobody know he was the son of God yet? Didn't nobody know nothing? And the Lord just went for it. And everybody just looked at him because they marveled at his boldness. Do you know why? Because when the door opened for Jesus, he was ready. If you've been saying for years now that you wanted to get married, what if you met that person tomorrow? Would you be ready? Do you have some lister strips? in your pocket to freshen up your breath. <laughs> no, we didn't say that. Yes, I did. Do you have some stuff so that your hygiene is good so when you meet new people, you smell good? Do you know how to make conversation? Do you know how to connect, engage? Do you make eye contact when you talk, with people, talk to people? Or do you hold your head down like you're shy and apologetic? You think you're going to get a spouse that way? You think you're going to get a new job that way? When you meet people, they want you to look them in the eye and they want you to shake their hand with confidence, okay? If somebody's going to put a $50 million account in your hand, you can't be he but a hobbita. you got to be yes sir or yes ma'am, I can handle it, even if you're nervous, okay? And that's what I mean when I say that a lot of people miss their window or their opportunity because they don't really believe it, believe it. And when God opens the door, they are not ready. When God opened the door for Joseph, Joseph was in prison. Now, when I say in prison, it's not like our prisons. Prisons in Joseph's day in Egypt were literally holes in the ground. So he was like in a pit in the ground, and I can't imagine the claustrophobia of being down in a hole. And he had a long beard and scraggly face, and obviously he stunk because there's no shower in a pit, and he's down there having to go to the bathroom, and here comes somebody saying, Pharaoh wants to see you. Joseph said, what'd you say? I said, Pharaoh wants to see you. Joseph said, when? Right now. What did Joseph do? They helped him out of that pit. Joseph shaved, showered, freshened himself up, and stood before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, I've had a dream, and I've tested all my wise men, and all my wise men can't tell me the interpretation of my dream. But somebody told me that you know how to interpret dreams. And what did Joseph say? Joseph said, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And then Pharaoh said the dream, and then Joseph interpreted the dream like, Jack, like that. And Joseph said, well, this is what the, the dream means, Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph on the spot, he promoted Joseph to be in second in command of Egypt. He went from the pit to the palace in a moment of time. Because when the door opened for him, he was ready. So I'm trying to encourage those of you that are listening to me that have been holding faith for a long time for a promise from God. One day that door is actually going to open. 
And you got to be ready. Do you have your resume ready? Do you have your elevator speech ready? Your 15-second speech. Could you tell somebody in 15 seconds what your project is about and get them excited about it? What if they want to write you a check? They said, you know, David, I want to fund this project, but just give me a brief overview. Do you have that or are you hebe a hobbit? You can't be hebe a hobbit when the door opens. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say, what if you flow on the prophetic and somebody sees you and somebody invites you to a world stage and all of a sudden the whole world is looking at you? What if that happened? That you got on an international stage and everything, every word you were saying was being translated into multiple languages. Okay? Are you strong enough in your faith? Are you strong enough in your prophetic? Are you strong enough in your flow to handle something like that? Do you see what I mean? So we want to go all the way through the process. We want to hear what God has to say. We want to believe. We want to obey. But when the door opens, we want to be ready. We want to be ready. We want to be ready. Okay? All right. So uh, that's the word for today. I hope you got something out of that. I'm going to pray in the spirit and ask the Holy Ghost if there are unclean spirits that need to be, uh, be cast out, any kind of deliverance, any kind of healing, anything with finances. So hold on. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying that somebody needs to be healed across the bridge of their nose. So do what I'm about to tell you. Put your hand on the bridge of your nose. And say, in the name of Jesus, I command every part of my nose to be 100% whole. Uh, I command wholeness, fullness, nothing broken, nothing missing in my nose right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth I command it and it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Mm. The Holy Ghost says somebody's struggling with something with a brain. So maybe a brain tumor or brain cancer, or maybe you got pressure on the brain. I don't know. But right now, put your hand right on your forehead and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command my brain to be every whit whole, every blood vessel, every, every synapse, every part of my brain, my, my brain stem, my, my cortex, my frontal lobes, every part of my brain, I command it to be 100% whole in Jesus' name. Nothing broken, nothing missing. 100% whole function in my brain right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command it. Amen. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me I need to cast out a spirit of unbelief. So in the name of Jesus, I command you, spirit of unbelief, to go. I cast you out, I break you off of people's heads, I cast you out of people's ears in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of unbelief that is trying to snatch the word of God out of people's hearts. I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because the demons are subject to us in his name. You have no power or authority. So in Jesus' name, I command you to come out and you can't jump on anybody else and you have to leave the area. And you will leave the saints of God alone that we might be able to hear Believe and obey God in the fullness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it and demand it. Amen. And the last word is about finances. The Holy Ghost is saying that you have to study finances because many of us have been asking God about money, but you wouldn't know what to do with money. What if God had somebody write you a million dollar check right now? What would you do with it? Do you know what to do with it? Do you know that a million dollar check, if it's going to be taxed, is actually half a million? If somebody gives you a million, that's actually 500000 maybe less. But you have to pay at least half of that in, in federal, state, and maybe local taxes. That's a mistake a lot of people make. If you get money like that, a million dollars is only $500,000 or less. That's the first thing. Okay? So would you know what to do with it if you got it? So the Lord is saying that there are many saints need to study money. So then when God gives you financial deliverance, you know what to do. So when you speak to the mountain and the mountain finally moves, you know what to do with that situation. Okay? Hmm.
Okay, all right. The uh, Holy Ghost is telling me he wants me to repeat the word I released in church this morning. So here it goes. For thus saith the Lord, for behold my people, it is time for something new. Many of you have misunderstood what I'm doing in your life. You think I've been delaying you. I've been preparing you. Because when I open my hand and I release the manifestation of what you've been praying for, it's going to happen so fast, you're not going to have time to prepare then. Therefore, my people, I release unto you a spirit of suddenly, a spirit of sudden miracles, a spirit of sudden deliverance, and a spirit of sudden change in your life. For as the new flowers burst forth as we go into the first of May, so do my new things burst forth into your life. So as you go about the rest of your day, prepare for me, the bridegroom, to show up. And when I show up, when I come into your life with the manifestation, with the fullness of what you've been praying for, I'm going to show up so full, I'm going to show up so fast, and I'm going to show up so furious that I'm going to change your whole life, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. So look like to me, the Holy Ghost is telling us to get ready, get ready, get ready to prepare. Because when the blessing comes, it's going to come into fullness. Now, I'm excited about that word. I'm excited about that word. So I'm doing the same thing you're doing. I'm going to keep speaking to my mountain, but I'm going to be preparing. So that when the Lord opens his hand and lets that, and lets that blessing loose, and that blessing is so big and so full and so thick that my whole life changes, I'm ready to go. And remember, faith does not mean that you won't be nervous or... You won't have those feelings or you won't be struggling with your confidence. That's not what faith means. Faith means you believe God enough to go ahead on and do it anyway. Okay? Go ahead on and do it anyway. Remember that the Lord struggled before he went to the cross. And he went before Father three times in prayer. Okay? But he never lost faith. He went on ahead and did it anyway. Okay? So I want to encourage you when that door opens, if you're nervous, that's okay. Go through it anyway. When you meet that person and you're nervous, that's okay. Talk to them anyway. Okay? All right. All right. That's it for this week. God bless you. Um, I'm back on my regular schedule, so I'll be here on Sundays at 2.30 and then on second Thursdays at 7 o'clock. I was just thinking about this month. I have an extremely busy month, but when is that not true? I've got another book launch coming up. I've got an interview coming up. I've got an author signing coming up, so I've got a lot going on. But I say that to let you know that I'm living what I'm teaching. I'm out there doing it. I'm out there doing my career and living my dream. I'm not just talking to you about something that I personally am not doing. That's why I say that. All right? So God bless you. I want you to be encouraged. So I will see you same time uh, next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central, uh, Central Standard Time. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you for those of you that are watching the replay on YouTube. And remember... Remember, speak to that mountain and get ready for when it moves. God bless.